Nowadays, when you look at the NASCAR Cup Series and basically all of the top three national touring series, there is a driver that many people look at and immediately label a NASCAR bust. And that, of course, is Cole Custer. And it has many asking the question. What happened? And it's kind of amazing just how far the hype for Cole Custer fell. Not to say that he was ultra hyped heading into Cup, but he was seen as a driver who should be very serviceable, very good in the future, and somebody who'd be a good work in progress, but the future of Stuart Haas racing. Back in his Xfinity days, and especially in 2019, Cole Custer was one of the guys at the top of the NASCAR Xfinity world. Now, well, it's not exactly a rosy picture. So today, we're going to look back at everything in Cole Custer's Cup career that has shown statistically why he has been basically the worst you can possibly be in good equipment like this. Now, of course, we have to get the lead up. Cole Custer spent three straight seasons in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, honing in his racing craft so that he could become ready to be a Cup Series driver. Now, in his first year in 2017, he was actually pretty good. He got a win, 7 top 5s and 19 top 10s, and led over 300 laps. Also, his average of 13.3 was pretty good for a guy entering this series. He ranked 5th in points, and he was able to keep care of the car more and more each passing race. Something that's really good to note about Cole Custer in this time is the fact that he really was setting the groundwork up to be a top-level Xfinity Series driver in the coming year or two. And that's exactly what he did. In two straight seasons, he made the Final Four. In two straight seasons, he ran runner-up. And those two seasons saw him have huge increases in performance year over year over year. In 2018, while he only had one win, he doubled his top fives, had 26 top tens, plenty of poles, led more laps, finished second in points like we talked about before, and in both seasons had a ninth place average finish. He finished on the lead lap more, and in 2019, all of this came to a head, to where he led almost a thousand laps. He had more top fives, 17, than the 14 he had in 2018, and he won seven races that year and was one of the big three guys that year along with of course Reddick and Christopher Bell both of which are drivers who are now elite level cup series drivers and funny enough are part of the Toyota family together Custer looked to be right up there with them and when they all went up to the cup series the next year all were expected to actually have a pretty good performance as a rookie and then his cup career started Starting out his cup career, in his first season, Custer actually had some pretty good runs. He did get seven top tens on the year, he got a few top fives, and one of those top fives was actually a win that he had at the end of the final Kentucky race ever. That qualified him for the playoffs, and he even had an average finish of a 19.2. Now, all of that is a pretty good starting point, and when you look at him compared to his team, he did score the same amount of top fives as Clint Boyer. But his average finish was well below everybody else. He only led five laps when everyone else led 280 or more. And he had Kevin Harvick, who won nine of the 36 races that year and finished in the top 10 in 75% of the races with a 7.3 average. So he definitely wasn't getting the most out of the equipment, but I wouldn't even say the equipment was really the problem. In 2021, he took a step back. He only had two top 10s on the entire year, did lead four more laps, so big whoop there, but ended up finishing 26th in the final standings with a 21.3 average finish. When you look at how he compared overall to the rest of his team, it was night and day difference for most of them. You look at Kevin Harvick. Didn't win any races, but had double digits in the top five and top 10 department, but that is Kevin Harvick we're talking about. You have Eric Amarola. Got a win, didn't run very well, so the equipment was pretty bad, but still had a two-position better average finish than him. Same with fellow teammate and young driver and rookie Chase Briscoe. You could chalk this up to being an SHR issue. 
SHR was having a lot of issues in 21 and going into this past year in 2022, but Custer still, again, is the lowest and is outperformed by guys with less experience than him. And he only had 17 lead lap finishes, which is abhorrently bad for a second-year driver in such good equipment. And then we look at last year. Last year, Cole Custer ended up getting three top 10s. He had a pole and he led double digit laps. So there was some, some slight improvement. His average finish went up by about half of a position and he finished 25th in the standings, but he had his career high of seven DNFs. And while he had 21 lead lap finishes, that was still far and away the lowest on the team. Eric Almarola was much more consistent, having two top fives and seven top tens. And Chase Briscoe even made a run at the championship. Of course, even with a down year, Kevin Harvick led the team. But SHR was better in 2022 than it was in 2021. And I want to point out two things. In 2022 and 2021, he scored 589 points and 575 points, respectively. Not very good, though. I'm going to be honest with you, because remember back to another SHR driver, a driver that many people think is one of the worst NASCAR drivers in modern history, Danica Patrick. Danica Patrick, without the aid of stage points, I might add, scored more points in the entire season than Cole Custer did in four of her five full-time seasons from 2013 to 2017. The only one with less was in 2017, which was far and away her worst season. Points-wise, outside of qualifying for the playoffs, which, let's be honest, had he not, he'd probably still be in the mid-20s, Cole Custer was worse in points than Danica was in basically the same equipment. What I'm trying to say is this. Cole Custer, no matter how you chalk it up or how you say it, disappointed on just about every single level he possibly could. Now, while this is really bad, and at the moment he would be a NASCAR bust, I will say this. There are three reasons, in my opinion, why this shouldn't be considered the end yet for Cole Custer. Number one is his brief time in the Xfinity Series last year. In five starts, he got a very, very good win, ran up front for most of the time, got two top fives and three top tens, led damn near a quarter of the laps he was in, and all around looked like the great driver he looked like in 2019 in Xfinity. While that is not a great indicator that he's going to be a dominant Cup Series driver one day, what it shows is when he has the equipment behind him, he can perform at the best of them. Because guys like Ty Gibbs and Noah Gregson are considered Cup-ready guys, and he outran them pretty handily in the Xfinity Series. Now, another reason why this shouldn't be considered the end of his career just yet is because Cole Custer is a very young guy who has a lot of connections with Stuart Haas Racing. He will be 25 years old starting in 2023. And there have been drivers before who have been young and not performed in good rides or serviceable rides. Looking at guys like Eric Almarola, William Byron, or Joey Logano. But when the right fit comes or when they get enough experience, the performance starts to elevate. So again, not the end for Cole Custer. And then the biggest one is, like I said before, Stuart House Racing's been off. If you actually want me to believe that Kevin Harvick in the span of one offseason dropped off from a nine-win driver to a zero-win driver simply off talent, well, I hope you have some oceanfront property in Nebraska for me. Because there is no way that you can convince me that Harvick fell off that much. Now, he might have fallen off a little bit because of age, but what I'm trying to get at more is that the equipment is more the reason why you see the SHR guys struggling. And while Cole Custer was the worst in every single season in the SHR equipment, I'm not using the equipment to completely wash away his bad results. But what I'm saying is, if he had better equipment, like in 2020, he'd have better results. And I think that if he's able to mature more as a driver, he'd be a solid Eric Almarola, maybe Clint Boyer type driver. Now, with all this, I want to pass it all on to you. What do you think the future holds for Cole Custer? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thanks so much to all my channel members for your continued support, and be sure to watch the live stream we're going to have tonight on my channel at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Going to be fun. We're going to talk everything off-season. So until then, and until next time, have a good one.